I'll tell you what, I'm going to jump into this word uh, This is that the Lord's given me tonight for you. How do we hear God on a clearer, more consistent basis? I'm glad you guys asked. Uh, speak, Lord, for your servant. Listen, is everyone familiar with the, uh, the prophet Samuel in the Old Testament? Oh, my Lord, if you have not read... First and Second Samuel in the Bible, do yourself a favor and go back there. Man, you got adventure, you got love stories, man. Uh, you got David riding down one side of the mountain trying to outrun King Saul. Saul's on the other side, man. The chase is on. You know, you got deception, murder, all this stuff, man. Just, I mean, it's just, man, how can you not be entertained by this, you know? And then at the same time, informed. And so with that, but yes, Samuel here, this is before David. We all know the story of how uh, Samuel anointed Saul to be king and Saul rejected God. And he, he, he was 99% obedient to what God told him to do, but it was that 1% disobedience that cost him the kingdom. So God sought out a man after his own heart, King David. Amen? But uh, I would love to talk about that, but tonight I want to talk to you about Samuel because I see a story here about how to hear God on a more cons clear, consistent basis. Samuel uh, was the last judge, and the, the, right before the Samuels, we read about the judges. He was the last judge of Israel and the first prophet of the Lord. A prophet is a mouthpiece for the Lord. They are God's mouthpiece, his chosen vessels there. Uh, and saying that he's a, he's a mouthpiece, that's basically just a fancy way of saying that when God spoke to him, he got really good at listening. Amen, somebody? He got really good at listening. But not only that, not just listening, uh, he also uh, remained faithful in repeating what he had heard from God to others. Amen? It's not always easy when you got a word from the Lord and God says, I need you to go talk to this brother or sister, man. There's a lot of stuff because you don't want to be rejected. Amen, somebody? You don't want to be shunned. You don't want people to take their ball and go home. Well, we're leaving this church. We're not doing this. We're not doing that, you know? And man, uh, you know, and so it's one thing, yeah, to have God talk to you. But to be obedient with that message, that's a whole different level of ball game right there. And this guy did that consistently. Yeah, he had some problems. He had he didn't discipline his kids. Uh, he forgot his home ministry first and stuff like that. But then his uh, his father figure Eli did the same thing. So you know, monkey see, monkey do there. Mm -hmm. But with that, uh, he uh, he 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 got really good at hearing God. But before all this, before all this, there was a time when Samuel had to learn how to hear from God, just like the rest of us. Amen? And so that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Now, just to kind of um, paint the picture here, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. If you'll remember his mother Hannah, she said, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give him right back to you. And, and she did. And so she dropped him off with... Uh, Eli, Larry, I'm glad no one's ever showed up at the church and said, here's my kids. The Lord told me to give them to you. you, know, like, you, know, <laughs> you know? That's what she did. Here you go. You know? And so uh, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. So if it's rare, that means that he, is, he can talk. I think we've established that. Amen? But he's not talking. Amen? Uh, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Watch this. There was no widespread revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation, the book, you know, not the book in the Bible, Revelations, but the Bible is revelation. It's God revealing himself to mankind. Amen? Amen. He's done it through a multitude of ways. Songs, prophecies, circumstances, so on and so forth. But here, here's a time in Israel where God's not talking. He's not talking. It makes you wonder. I mean, people were going around, man. What do we do? What do we do? I don't know, you know. Well, have, has anybody heard from God? Nope. Nope, he ain't talking. So how did that happen? If you look back, and as I said, Samuel was the last judge, the first prophet. If you look back in Judges, you see a verse here. It says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now, here's a valuable lesson uh, when it comes to hearing from God on a clear and consistent basis. I, uh, I've shared this before a long time ago. I had sin in my life, and I knew what the Word of God said to do, and I wasn't doing it. And so then I, sin does what it always does, you know, hands it to you. And then uh, after that, the Holy Spirit took his presence off me, and he wasn't talking for about two years. Mm -hmm. Two years I'm in the wilderness, mm -hmm. the spiritual wilderness there. And uh, I, I talked to a fellow pastor, and I told him, I was like, I don't know what to do. I think God's given up on me. I think I'm on my salvation. He's like, I don't think it's that. He's like, I tell you what I do think it is, though. 
You said you knew what to do for two years, and you didn't do it. You knew what God wanted you to do for two years, and so I think now the lesson is, are you going to do what you're supposed to do without him having to tell you to do it? Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so if you're not doing what you know to be right, if you're not listening when God's talking to you, then he's not going to talk. Yeah, right. Amen? If I'm mentoring a guy and he ain't taking my advice, or if I'm mentoring somebody and they're not listening, why am I going to continue this conversation with you? Yeah. If you can't be faithful and do what you, you, you said you're going to do, I'm not going to give you additional responsibility. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, I like this here. They're talking about an actual king, like an, you know, like King, uh, king David or whatever. But there's, there's, there's layers on this for us today. Amen? In those days, there was no king in Israel. It could be said in our nation today is, do we have a king named Jesus? Are we looking to the government? Yeah. Yeah, do we have a president? Yeah. Uh, where are we putting our hopes in? You know, Where's our nation putting our hopes in? Amen, somebody? And so, without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the people perish, yeah. In those days, there was no king in Israel, and everyone just did what was right in their own eyes. God's word claims to be the source of absolute truth. Amen? That means it's true for all races, faces, and places. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or who you've been with. Amen. It says this is for you. As sure as the sun's going to come up tomorrow, you know, this word of God applies to you. It's not a pick-and-choose deal or a buffet Christian, oh, we'll have some of that, have some of that. Oh, no, no, no thank you on this. <laughs> no, no. And so what that, this is what these people were doing. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. The whole nation. So the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. They're not going to listen. He's not going to talk. Uh, and so with that, uh, what's been done before will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastics. We see it here in Samuel, and then we see it here again uh, in the book of Amos. Towards the, the end, closer to the end of the Old Testament. In Amos, it says, the day, now this is Amos prophesying. He says, the days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from the north to the east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Ah, uh, Amos prophesied this, and then. You'll know a prophet by if their prophecies come to pass. Uh, right after this, uh, we go into the time gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And uh, Isaiah, I think, was one of the last ones that says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and be with child. And that's like one of the last things for like 400-something years, 458 or so. I can't forget how long it is, but hundreds of years. Mm. There was no word from the Lord. And so, man, uh, the Bible says what's been done before will be done again. Church, we're looking at a time where unless you have disciplined yourself, unless you have trained yourself to know the word, to get a hold of the Lord in times of famine, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, all throughout the Bible, we see that in times of famine, the people of God were in plenty. We see Joseph in the Old Testament surviving, not just sur surviving, but thriving, amen? And so there's going to come a time, days of famine, where the word of the Lord is scarce. Uh, there's going to be preachers out there preaching prosperity gospel, watered-down versions. Uh, pat you on the tush ministries is what they're going to call it, you know? But that ain't the word of the Lord. Now, that's not to say there's not grace in it, there's not love in it, but at the same time, are you offering the full counsel of God? And so people will go, have you heard from the word? Have you this or that, you know? In some countries, it's happening. You know, they're meeting underground and tearing out Bible pages and handing them yes. to one another. My God, do we got it so good over here. Yeah, that's yes. right. And we take it for granted. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the Bible says there will be a time where you'll say, any word from the Lord, it'll mm -hmm. be nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So, man, uh, times of famine are coming. Mm -hmm. Will you be ready when it does? Mm -hmm. So we'll come back to that. Let's jump into this uh, young Samuel and Eli. Uh, you all know the story. Uh, the mom drops uh, Samuel off. Uh, now, Eli. Eli here. He is a piece of work for a minister, to say the least. I don't know if you know the story or not. Uh, he was fat. He was overweight. The Bible says he was fat. Not my words, the Bible's. So I don't know if that's politically correct, but he was. Uh, it says he was dim-sighted. You know, he was getting blind. When he, when he died, he fell over backwards in a chair because of his weight and his neck stabbed. He, he could barely open his eyes. Uh, but I think there's layers to that, too. I Because he didn't have his spiritual eyes open either. 
when Hannah came praying, when Hannah came praying to the altar, man, she was just bemoaning in her spirit. She's like, Lord, give me a child, give me a child. But when she was talking, uh, words weren't coming out of her mouth. She was just moving her lips. She's praying like, you know, and so Eli, here's Eli here. He's over there. He's like, what are you, drunk? You know? <laughs> Could you imagine being up there at the altar at Grace Point? And you're just pouring your spirit out. You know, just, God, I want to be closer to you. Lord, I want to glorify you. Lord, isn't that? And here comes uh, Joey, or me, or Scott, or Larry. You're like, what are you, drunk? You know, just <laughs> while you're right up there at the altar pouring it out. This guy, this girl's just, she's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm deeply mourned in spirit, you know, and this and that. He's like, oh, bless you, you know, and you'll have a child, this and that. But he was completely, completely oblivious to the movings of God, to the things of God, this and that. He had two boys that were uh, prostituting and women out at the temple and taking things from the Lord saying, hey, let me tell you, I stole some stuff before, but you don't steal from the Lord. That don't ever end well. These guys died, you know. And so Eli, uh, he was a spiritual leader who forgot his charge. Amen. Which is easy to do when you're, uh, when the nation's in a famine and people are bringing in your offering all the time, man, it's awfully easy to get uh, comfortable in that, you know. So here he is. Uh, and so she makes good on it. She brings them this thing. And here's the thing, another thing. This one's free, the next one will cost you. If you don't do what God's called you to do, he's going to send somebody else. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what God's called you to do, he will send somebody else. That's right. He sent Samuel. He sent Samuel right in there. He had his man in place before it ever went down. And so Samuel's in there. He's, he's, he's a young boy. And uh, he's laying there in bed, and all of a sudden uh, he hears something. And uh, he's like, what is, what is that? You know, what is that? So he goes to Eli. He's like, you call me? You know, because the thing said, Samuel. He gets up. He goes, Eli, what was it? You need me, sir? You know, uh, Johnny on the spot here. I like this guy, you know. And he's like, no, I didn't leave you. And he's like, go back to bed, you know. And then so he goes to bed a second time. And he, and he hears Samuel. And he comes back. He's like, surely you called me. You know, he's like, what's the matter with you, boy? Go back to bed. So he came a third time. Samuel. And at that point, then Eli, oh, that's God talking to you. You know, uh, because nobody had heard the voice of the Lord in a while, including Eli. So he said, here's what you do. So let's look at this. First Samuel, again, this guy was one of the best people at ever hearing the voice of God. But there was a time where he didn't know how to hear it, and he had to be taught. This is that time. First Samuel 3, 7 to 1. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord's, uh, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli, then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak, Lord, for mm -hmm. your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling us in other times. Samuel... Samuel, then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. You know? uh, and that's when he brought uh, judgment down on the house of Eli. Eli's sons died. Eli died. Uh, one of the sons' wives had a child named Ichabod, and then the mom died, you know, and this, it, was, it was death. It was a horrible, horrible thing. But in that... There's, I, I just love how even in the most horrible things, there's a gem. There's a nugget. And there's two necessities, I believe, in here from this interaction. He didn't know how to hear God. There's two necessities to hearing God better in this, and I just want to share them with you with the time we got left tonight. Uh, the first thing, if you want to hone your skill, if you want to you know, get good at it, the first thing you need to say, notice Samuel's humility and his teachable spirit. I mean, granted, he was a kid, you know, kids, you know, especially... You know, uh, Jewish children, you know, they respect their elders. But there was a humility and a teachable spirit. I would take a teachable spirit over talent any day Amen. of the week. Amen. Amen. You give Amen. me somebody that just like, yes, okay, I'll, I'll do that, man. That's what the disciples had. They were prideful. They were messed up. They cussed like sailors because they were, but they were teachable. Mm -hmm. They were teachable. You always said that about Mark. Yeah, and Mark was Mark was one of the most teachable guys I knew, Joyce. Yeah. He would do anything I yeah. told him to do. Everything I told him to do, he did it. No yeah. questions asked. Um uh, so Samuel, he was humility. Uh, he had humility. He had a teachable spirit, but not first and foremost. He had this humility from his God ordained leader and fellow Christian Eli. Here's a guy that's got no business in leadership. Uh, 
Leadership is a privilege, and Eli had disqualified himself from that. And God passed judgment and said, you're disqualified. You are out. And he already had his man in place. But with that, despite all this guy's flaws, and let this be a lesson to you. Some of you guys got them bosses that are jerks. Some of you guys got them people that clearly shouldn't even be in charge of a barrel of sea monkeys. Amen, somebody? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Amen. Whoever they are. You got to have a humility to you and a teachable spirit. Everyone's got something to teach you. Dale Carnegie said, even to the homeless man with the squeegee, in some area or another, he is the master and I am the student. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for making me read that book, by the way. <laughs> You're reading this. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Everyone's got something to teach you. The only question is, is are you teachable? Amen. Amen. I don't care where you're at. Everything's a lesson. I don't care what you're watching on TV. I do care. I'm going to take that back. I do care. But it doesn't matter because there's a lesson in it. There's a word in it. Every song, every situation, every day, he is broadcasting. Amen? Amen. And so from that, you need a teachable spirit. You need a humility for your God-ordained leaders, Christian and secular. Uh, not only was there a humility and a teachable spirit with his leader, but there was also a humility and a teachable spirit with God. If you notice, he's laying on the floor, and he, you know, he didn't get the words verbatim like Eli said it. He was nervous, you know, uh, kind of like we were when we come to the Lord for the first time. Lord, if you're there, you know, if you, if you, if you hear me, if you, can you hear me, Lord? <laughs> and uh, he just says, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. Uh, he's basically saying, God, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I, I don't want to talk. I just want to listen. Yes. You know, show me. Teach me. Take me by the hand. You know, I don't know what I'm doing here. <clears throat> and like a father teaches his son to play catch or to ride a bike or something, or a mother teaches her girls to do whatever it is you girls do. I don't even know. <laughs> cook. 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 That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I'm just playing. We darn saw. That's not what I taught my girl, you know. Yeah, she's, she's ready to fight you. You know? <laughs> but with that, um, he just had a humility to God that, listen, you're God, I'm not, and I need you to teach me how to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a seeking God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. It's Amen. coming to him and Amen. just saying, Lord, I might not like what you say, right. but speak. Speak, right. Lord, for your servant is listening. Yeah. Amen? So the, uh, two necessities, this counts as one. I'm going to get to the second one in a second. Uh <laughs> Now Samuel grows up a little bit. We're going to come back to the second way from that first interaction in a second. Mm -hmm. It said the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. Now watch this. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. You will know a prophet by if their prophecies come to pass. Right? Right. So he didn't know how to hear God. He starts growing up. Something's happening here. Speak, Lord, for your servant listens. And then as he's getting older, all these things, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. None of his, none of his uh, Samuel's words fell to the ground. So uh, now watch this. And all, not, not some, all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel wasn't attested as a prophet of the Lord. How do you know that when you're coming up to someone, hey, buddy, I feel like the Lord's laid a word on my heart for you, Mark or Wayne or, you know, Vernon, whatever. Uh, how do you know that that's him, not you, this and that? But Samuel here, uh, man, if this guy was a ball player, man, he's, he's, he's batting a thousand, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know? Right. And so with that, um, I'm going to get to that, but I just, it says he let none of his words fall to the ground. Let's look at some of those words, just for purposes. I want to show you the ways that God spoke to Samuel. Now, we've covered a wide range of the ways that God speaks to us. But let's look at some of the ways that God speaks to Samuel. First of all, we just saw in uh, chapter 3 here, through other believers. Okay, here's what you do, Samuel. You go in there, you lay down, you say, Speak, Lord, pray your servant listens. Okay, and then God spoke to him through that. He spoke to Samuel through an audible voice. He's like, Samuel. It says he stood at his feet and said, Samuel. So he was in the room. We got an audible voice. Uh, then we see in uh, Samuel chapter 3, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 13, chapter 15, he's prophesying. God is speaking through prophecy to Samuel. Uh, we see him speaking through prayer. Thus saith the Lord, he was praying, and then God spoke in 1 Samuel chapter 7 and chapter 8. Are any of these avenues sounding familiar? Have we not covered these and said God speaks this way, right? Uh, he spoke to Samuel through a history account. Uh, when he said, listen, you guys don't want a king. 
You know, you, you think you do, but you don't. He's mm -hmm. like, you're a royal priesthood and this and that. He's like, from the time that Moses came out of Egypt with this and that and this and that. And so he starts telling these people. He gives them a history account. And God is speaking through Samuel to the people through this history account. They always did that. Whenever they got the pulpit, man, they always gave a history account, you know. Mm -hmm. You wandered the wilderness for 40 years. It isn't it, you know. <laughs> then you're taken away in captivity. You know, they always do that through the history account. But we saw that. God speaks through history. These things were done before for our instruction, is what it said. Uh, he spoke to him through signs or lots. When they were looking for Saul, okay, where's the guy? All right, let's cast lots. And okay, the tribe of Benjamin was selected. The house of Kish was selected. Okay, where's the guy? He's not here. And so he's speaking through signs like he did with Gideon. Lord, if it's your will, you know, let me know. He's speaking to him through signs. He's uh, speaking to Samuel uh, through nature thunder and rain when they finally said okay here's your king Saul but listen to just let you know I'm coming to the end of my days I'm done with this and just the Lord to show you that I've done nothing wrong Lord I call down uh, rain and thunder from heaven and just it started raining pouring people like oh we messed up we messed up he's like well listen you've done this out of ignorance and God's God's okay with you and so there again he spoke through nature and creation uh, God spoke to him through his God-given authority uh, Samuel had to correct Saul and so he spoke to him through his actions uh, we see that he speaks through discipline and chastisement uh, to the Amalites. Uh, Saul, God said to Saul, I want you to wipe out the Amalites. Women, children, all this. And Saul was 99% obedient to what God had said. That should scare you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? 99.99% Amen. Amen. obedient. He wiped them all out except for the king and except for the livestock. Mm. Uh, most people that I know in recovery, that's a good day. You know, mm -hmm. hey man, I, I did what you said. No, you didn't. You know? <laughs> And we do that. And so this guy was obedient. So let that be known. God tells you to do something. Man, partial obedience. It may be obedience to you, but it ain't to God. Amen. Amen, somebody. That's why we have absolute surrender in our program, right, Brian? You know, not partial surrender. You got yeah. There's an old show, homie, don't play that, you know. Yeah, God don't play that, man, you know. Homie the clown. So he spoke through discipline and chastisement, man. And so he, he, he wiped these guys out. That's God speaking, saying, this nation has displeased me. And Samuel executed it. Uh, we see through parables, illustrations, uh, the tearing of Saul's robe. When, Sa when Saul went to grab uh, Samuel's robe, he's like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't turn away from me. And he, and he grabs Samuel, like, please, please come back. And, the, and his robe ripped. And then Samuel turned around. He's like, the same way you have ripped this robe, loser, is uh, the kingdom will be ripped from you. You know, he didn't call him a loser. But he was. And so right there, through it, that's a parable. That's an illustration. God said through this. This is like what's just happened to you. And uh, one more here. Uh, through the conscious, through the thoughts, through the feelings, or the laying on of things of heart, and that still small voice in 1 Samuel 16 as he's finishing up his ministry there. All these different ways God spoke to and through Samuel. And if you remember, it just said, God let none of his words fall to the ground. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. i got a pretty decent bat and average myself because I've disciplined myself. I've, I've got in the Word. I've done this. But, man, I don't get it right every time. Not even close, you know? <coughs> None of his words fell to the ground. So, with that, let's. where's the, uh, the secret recipe? I'm glad you guys asked. I knew this was a food group, so I saved the secret ingredient till the end here. Let's look at this. Now, if you remember... The Lord, how, how did he get to hearing God that this is God, this is God, this is God, this is God, this is God. Then the Lord was with Samuel and he grew up. He let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all, all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba uh, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. See, it always comes back to that. A good preacher will always bring it back to the Bible. Larry. I'm glad I could be on that list. It was through the Word. He continued to appear. Now, the Word of the Lord was rare in those days, but not in Samuel's house. Amen? It was, it was dry even in members of his own house. Eli, his uh, more or less, I guess, what did I get? His cousins? Eli's son? His cousins? Nephews? Nephews. Nephews, I think. Kind of, because Eli's kind of like his dad. So, I don't know, brothers, whatever. Uh, these guys weren't hearing it. Eli wasn't hearing it, but he was hearing it, and he did this. He continued to talk to Samuel, and he did it through his word. Now, remember, he continued to grow while he's growing. Uh, man, when you're growing up, you used to see them milk commercials all the time, you know. 
drinking milk gives, makes me strong, this and that, you know, and avoids osteoporosis and stuff like that. You're getting strong on the milk, you know, you're laughing at me now, but one day I'm getting that person gets all big. Remember the commercials in the 80s? I'm going to add that to the video later. With that, there are certain things you need to grow big and strong in the Word, in the Lord, and that's the Word. And so this leads us to our second necessity. Uh, you need a humility, and you need a teachable spirit. And the second thing you need, and big surprise, is reading the Word of God. In order to know what God is saying, you first have to know what He has said. Uh, learning to hear the voice of God. I need to know the tone of His voice. I need to know His preferences. I need to know this. And so with that, uh, not just reading it. Man, I can get in there and read it, you know. I made my kid read it one time, and she's like, <laughs> I was like, you're on, I was like, you're grounded. When you finish this, uh, Matthew, uh, you can be ungrounded. She come in like five minutes later, I'm done, you know, and I'm like, nah, I'm like, tell me what you read. I don't know, you know, and I'm like, tell me anything you read. I, I don't know, I just read it, you know, it was, it was like 30 minutes or an hour, you know, but with that, I'm um, like, you read it, but you didn't read it, amen? So we can do that. So it's not just a reading it. It's a honing our skills. Let's look at this verse. Hey, let's find a, 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 an accompanying verse. I know you read in your Bibles, and you see there where there's like a little note, like you'll be over here in Galatians, and it'll say John 3, 16, or, you know, uh, Romans 5, 8. Man, flip over to Romans 5, 8, and you'll see. And those verses are there to show you this is in complement with this. You know, this, this works with that, you know. Or do a study thing, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, saying that you can read your word, but it's word reading you. Amen, somebody. Is it reading you? He said, you can read the word, but is the word reading you? See, you read it, and it comes it's offensive. It comes into conflict with you. It's like the Holy Spirit will start talking to you and just Amen. Mm -hmm. you can't do that anymore. You do this. You know, to some degree. It ain't always exact, but you know, yeah, you do this. So reading the word and honing our skills through the word of God. And with that, that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 5:14, now watch this, we've already had this one. Solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by what? By constant practice to distinguish good from evil. What determines, what defines good from evil? The word. Yeah. The word. Yeah. That's where we, how do I know that it's wrong to uh, commit adultery? How do I know that it's wrong to steal, to lie, to commit murder? Because the Bible says so. Amen? That's our moral standard. And so that's what tells me this is good, this is evil, this is right, this is wrong, this is in, this is out. Yep. And so I have to, solid food, you want to use all these other ways that uh, God's speaking to Samuel through prophecy, through music, through correction, through circumstance. I know we don't like the correction one, but all these other ways that we've listed. And, and again, those lists I gave you, the 30 different ways that God speaks to you, that's not an exhaustive list. God can use anything and everything at his disposal to speak to you. Amen. Uh, if he can speak through a donkey, he can definitely speak through your local pastor. Amen, somebody? You know, <laughs> he can speak through me. Uh, but it says here that there's levels, there's degrees of, you know, a craftsman, a master craftsman is someone who has mastered their craft. There's apprentices and so on and so forth. But man, we are to be master craftsmen when it comes to the Word of God. We're to know what it says. It's not saying you got to give a book, chapter, verse every single time. But like Larry says, what's down in the well comes out in the bucket. Amen. Amen. The ones that are important, the ones that God needs you to know, they're going to stick. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when somebody pushes you and starts pushing you, they're going to come out. I can't tell you how many times I've had something or been preaching something. I'm like, I didn't even know I knew that verse. You know? and I, I nailed it. You know? <laughs> and that'll happen. But right here, this talks about degrees of hearing from God. That, that's encouraging. Man, I, 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 I want to be good, but man, if I can be the best, that's even better. Yes. Amen. You know, I, if I can be the best me that I can be, and this says I can. It says solid food is for the mature, which implies that unsolid food is for the immature. I don't want to be immature. I spend enough of my life being immature. Amen? I didn't get any amens on that one. <laughs> Amen. Solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice. Amen. So you get in the Word. You read the Word. You heed the Word. You plead the Word. Amen. And then it happens. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's, it's a process. And so, uh, but this lets you know that if, if you do it just like Samuel, he didn't know how to hear from God. But man, he's there in the priest. He's there at the, the tabernacle. He's going through all this stuff. Okay, read this. If I'm Eli, I'm going to have that kid reading that book like probably. He's going to be like, hey, Eli, let's go outside and play. I'm like, no, go read this book. You know, I'm going to sit over here and 
be fat and blind, you know? <laughs> I don't want to, because he was lazy. He was lazy. So with that, um, just a couple thoughts about this, and we'll call it. Uh, this is the end of the many different ways that God speaks to us. We looked at we can have confidence by just filter. Number one, we filter it through God's word. Is what I think God's telling me in prayer, uh, circumstances, television, whatever, because he can talk through all these ways. Uh, does it line up with the testimony of Scripture? And not just plucking one verse out of there. Does it line up with the testimony of all Scripture? Amen? Amen. Uh, that was the, the first lesson. Then we looked at the many different ways that God speaks to us. But now uh, we've looked at how do we filter it, but now how do we hear it on a clear and consistent basis? And that's get in the Word. Start Amen. reading it. So a couple thoughts. Uh, number one, if you go away home with anything, carry this. God can speak to us through anything and everything. Yes. However, your prayer is not on the uh, same level or same caliber as the Word of God. Amen. 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 A lot of people like to think it is, and it's not. So God can speak to us in everything and everything. Uh, however, regardless of the infinite ways that God is capable of speaking to us, that does not mean that we are fully capable of listening at this point in time. As we've just saw, you need to hone your skills. You need to hone mm. this, yes. this and that. Uh, the Word of God. It's the only, only undiluted, 100% guarantee way to know that what you're hearing is from the heart of God instead of the heart of man. Amen. Amen. Uh, God's able to get it right every time, but when we get involved in the interpretation process, that's where things get messy. Uh, Samuel teaches us that uh, learning to hear the voice of the Lord is a process and an acquired skill set that will take time. It doesn't just happen overnight. Now, I know... That some of you all have been walking with the Lord 50 years and walking with him and talking with him. Uh, many individuals in this room have given me a word and said, Hey, thus saith the Lord, I feel like the Lord wants you to know this. You know? And man, I'm, I'm grateful for that. But the Bible says that uh, I need to be learning to do that for myself, to, to test the spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody? That's yeah. so you need to be entering into the closet. That's it, man. Prayer, closet, getting to know the sound of his voice. You know? And after a while, you know, you get better at it. You know, just like practice makes perfect. Practice yep. makes perfect. Uh, you know, I used to play Little League growing up, man. I wasn't, I wasn't great, but then the more I played, the more I practiced, the better I got. See, people are born with talent. You know, talent you're born with. But skill, skill uh, takes time. It takes discipline. you got to develop it. Now, God's given us all the talent to, to hear him to some degree. Some of us are stronger in the word. Some of us are stronger hearing him in prayer. But there's a skill to it. There's, a, dare I say, an art to it. Amen? Mm -hmm. How do you know that it's actually God and not the enemy quoting scripture at you? Yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. with that, uh, it's a process. It takes time. The more time you spend practicing, the faster and the better you get at hearing him. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, in the book dedication, uh, I said to Lisa, she was the first one, you know, I just want to acknowledgement. I'm like, thank you for supporting me and believing in me even when I don't believe in myself, not too many wives would let their husband quit his job, his paying job, because a voice in his head told him to. You know? That's what it says in the acknowledgments. You know? So you better make sure you're hearing it, because people are counting on you hearing it right. Amen. If you're in here instead of out there, people are counting on you getting this right. People you haven't even met yet are counting on you. Will you be ready? Uh, that's the bad news. The good news. Whether you're a shepherd, a sheep, or a former wolf in sheep's clothing, <laughs> uh, if you're interested in how to start hearing God on a clearer and more consistent basis, uh, then that can all start right here and right now by simply going to the Lord in a spirit of humility and a willingness to be taught by himself and others that he places in your life. Um, are you teachable? Ask questions. Ask God, you know. Teach me, God. Ask, uh, ask others, you know. Uh, Wayne, Wayne loves the disciple, you know. Ask him about that, you know. Just uh, anybody, everybody, anybody that can listen. Man, if you can teach me something, I want to know. And uh, last but not least, I would highly recommend, if you want to get better and clearer and more consistent and take your relationship with the Lord to the next level, and that thing there about uh, discernment and this, that tells me there are levels. Amen? If he's saying something, I don't want to miss that. Amen. Amen? I mean, yeah, I, I can hear him in the Bible. I can hear him in prayer. I can hear him in that. But if he's talking through a, I don't know, a xylophone or something like that, you know, or a, 
you know, one of them aborigine things where they, they spin it around, you know, and he's able to speak through that because he can speak through anything. Uh, if he's able to talk through that, then I want to be able to hear him through that. Amen. And I know you do too. That's why you're here. Yeah. Amen. So with that, I would highly recommend, if you want to get started on that, uh, start opening your Bibles and praying these humble words. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It all starts there. Amen. Amen. There's no other way to do this than to get in the Word and stay.